up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video and actually the final video before the draft. That's right. This right here is going to cover everything that I want to get out about, you know, about my last thoughts about the 2021 NFL draft. Of course, tomorrow night, Thursday night at 8 p.m. is uh, round one of said draft um i'll be on kid blues channel to cover the entire first round and then the second and third round day two of the draft friday night will be back on my channel so make sure you guys check that out but it's been a long off season of draft and free agency coverage it's finally coming to an end i I can't even tell you how excited I am, and I know you guys are extremely excited as well. I said it in my last video, this has got to be the the biggest involvement I've seen from Giants fans in my in my life personally when it comes to stuff like the draft, like doing mock drafts, like trying to research prospects and whatnot. I haven't seen Giants fans doing this at this current level ever before, and it's absolutely amazing to me. And it leads directly into just how invested the fans are in this franchise right now, how invested they are in our head coach Joe Judge, in the coaching staff, in our front office, even though not, not every single fan loves the front office, I mean, but you got to give them their credit, man. Shout out to Gelman. A big shout out to Kevin Abrams, the contract genius, and, you know, the entire scouting crew out there. Because in my opinion, the Giants have had some pretty good drafts under Gelman's regime, and we're hoping to have a pretty good one come Thursday. Now, for long-time viewers of the channel, you guys know, usually at some point before draft, I make a video to give my final thoughts on what I think is going to happen. In 2019, I actually did it, like, I think a week before, which was, a, that's kind of a big gap. But I did it a week before because it was right around that time, uh, like a lot of Giants fans at the time, I kind of had the Dwayne Haskins, uh, the Dwayne Haskins syndrome of, of really liking this dude and thinking he was going to be something. About a week before the draft, I came to my senses and I was like, I'm not sure how much I believe in Dwayne Haskins made a vid on that put out i'm like i don't want the giants to take him i can't remember if i did something similar last year for the 2020 draft but last year in general i was always an andrew thomas guy since like the last game of the season we played when we beat washington i'm like okay we're not getting chase young but we're gonna get the tackle out of georgia this year i'm doing that today <laughs> and i'm doing it because it's not to say a guy i don't want it's to say a guy that i do want and for the second year in a row i think it's gonna match up with what the giants might do in the draft and that is a wide receiver i've been a draft wide receiver in the first round guy since january you know back on the 17th of january i mocked Devonte smith to us at 11. then at the end of february beginning of march i mocked jalen waddle to us i did in my third mock draft end up having you know to tackle rashawn slater but my feelings on who or the position i wanted truly never changed and i feel like for those of you that watch the streams you guys have a general idea of that, but you know, I know not everybody can catch the streams. A lot more of you can catch these videos though. And for me, I still really want a wide receiver in the first round. And I still wholeheartedly believe that one of those Bama wide receivers are going to be there at 11. Whether it's Jalen Waddle, whether it's Devontae Smith, it doesn't matter to me. They're both great wide receivers. They're both great prospects. They're both two young football players that in my opinion are going to step right into their position on the Giants and have an immediate impact and be an immediate weapon for this team. And by all accounts, I really do think that the Giants are going to take a wide receiver. I, I feel like there's just too much information that points in that direction. Of course, there's been a lot of rumors about it. There's been more rumors linking the Giants to wide receivers than any other position this entire offseason. It's only recently that we've been getting stuff like the links to Michael Parsons. And when I say recently, I mean within the last month or month and a half, right? We've been getting links to Michael Parsons. We've been getting very, very short links to Rashawn Slater we've been getting very short links to AVT you know there was a, a they played like for a day or two with links to a couple of edge rushers but the most consistent link has always been Giants and a wide receiver particularly when the Bama boys now of course out of the two it looks like Devontae Smith might be the guy if they're at 11 that the Giants want a lot when you also go and look at the team and you look at what we've done in free agency and you consider the coaches and what they want um, and which, of course, you could only assume so much about what the coaches want. It still kind of leads towards wide receiver. Of course, in free agency, we did sign Kenny Galladay 100%. He's our number one guy. We did get that big weapon. But I don't think the wide receiver core is completely fixed. 
I really don't think that the addition of John Ross is anything too serious. The guy, even if he could keep healthy, still has issues with actually holding on to the football a lot like Evan Ingram. When it comes to the offensive line, which has been another link like I mentioned before, we've heard a lot of rumors saying that the people inside the building, whether it's the coaches, whether it's the front office, whoever it is, it's that the people inside the building of the Giants, they like their current um, offensive line core and they would want them to develop a little bit more together. And that's why they brought back Pat Flaherty and they hired a guy in Rob Sale. In addition to that, I just don't think a guy like Rashawn Slater is going to be there at 11. And you guys know my spiel on Parsons. I'm not going to completely repeat it. I do think he's a really great defensive talent. He will be an asset to this team, just not immediately um, because of his fit with the scheme. But once again, if there's a coach that could definitely do anything with him, it's going to be Pat Graham. Also, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Devontae Smith has been in a lot of interviews lately, and a lot of people are asking him about the Giants. I think he was on First Take recently um, where he got asked about the Giants. Uh, he was on an Instagram Live video where Xavier McKinney, of course, the Giants' safety, tuned in and was commenting, come to Big Blue, or like you'd look good in blue or something like that. And there was a lot of Giants fans spamming the comments of that live interview. Like... It, you know, Devontae Smith doesn't seem particularly adverse to coming here. Of course, once again, he's one of the rumored players that the Giants absolutely love. But one thing I, I want to throw into the pot a little bit, and I did say that in my last video, take each rumor with a grain of salt. Shout out to the New York Post and Paul Schwartz. This is from them with a quote-unquote Gettleman confidant. His name is Greg Gabriel, who's been a longtime NFL personnel guy. He says that chemistry is very important in his mind, referring to Dave Gellman. It's team building. You've got to have the right people in the locker room and you've got to rely on your scouts to get you the proper information so that you know you're getting the right people in the locker room. Getting the right people in the locker room was part of the job description for Gabriel and Gellman when they worked together for four years from 98 to 01 with the Giants. Gellman, who's 70, and Gabriel, who turned 70 in early May, are lifers when it comes to evaluating players. Gettleman has more than 30 years of experience as an NFL scout and executive. Gabriel was in the NFL for 30 years and 17 of them were with the Giants. He was the scouting director for the Bears after 9 years and most recently was the personnel defenders of the DC defenders in the XFL before it shut down. Rule number one, protect the quarterback, Gabriel said. Rule number two, get him weapons. They got Jones, the number one wide receiver in free agency. The draft is also very good at the wide receiver position, so they can get a receiver that is very good later in the draft. If a top offensive lineman is there, that might be the direction they go. And this is where I think that if Gabriel does truly know anything, right? Because, I mean, he could just be making a whole bunch of speculation and assumptions right now, which is why, once again, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it's very much possible that, you know, since this guy's like a 40-year friend of Gettleman, that Gettleman has told him a little bit about things, that they've exchanged ideas as he also has expertise in scouting and whatnot. But it's also very possible that Gettleman is like, nah, this is staying in-house. There's no reason for me to go and talk to somebody out of house for this. But if and if Gabriel does know anything, this is what leads me to believe it's going to be wide receiver as well. He says rule number one is protect the quarterback, but then he also said earlier on in the interview that they like the chemistry inside the building, which like I mentioned earlier, that's been a rumor, or not even a rumor, but an idea that's been floated around for a couple months now that the Giants really like who they have at the offensive line right now. And of course, he also mentions if the offensive lineman is there, they could go that direction. I know for a fact he's talking specifically about Rashawn Slater. That's the only offensive lineman that you'd put a, you know, the clause of if he is there in front of it. I um, mean, he's probably not going to be there. So it's looking like wide receiver, bros. I'm going to leave this article linked down below for you guys to read the rest of it and for you to, you know, let me know what you think about it. But in general, the whole point of this video was for me to give my final thoughts on what I think is going to happen in the draft. And it just so happens that it aligns with what I want to happen in the draft. I want a wide receiver at 11 and it's looking like the Giants might get a wide receiver at 11. Now when we're talking 42, I want another Bama boy in Dickerson as well, but that's where I'd get my offensive lineman. And well, we'll see where it goes from there. You guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.